Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, no, you know, my dear, well, go on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. And when I mean all, I mean all. I mean your Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, trans, you name it. We're on it. Just Google Ball Stop Podcast 101 and it will all pop up. Guarantee you. But if you want to see all of our visuals, you got to hop on over to our YouTube channel. That's where you'll see all our visuals. And we thank you for the subscriptions, but we would love you for the memberships. Go ahead and join our memberships. That's how you get to see all exclusive content. Because let me tell you, he has some stuff over there right now that he hasn't even released yet. And it's been in there for a little bit. So if y'all want to go see these interviews, y'all got to definitely sign up for our membership. How you can find that membership link is under each and every video including this one in the description section you'll see a link say join our membership today thank you in advance and we love you wow man check it man we got a guy here today listen man this guy family man listen hey man we in dallas texas man and how cool is it that we get to sit down with my guy six three A.K.A. the Row Music. Hey. I done switched it up now. It's 6'3". A.K.A. A.K.A. AKA. <laughs> the Row Music is in the building. Yes, sir. What's Mr. going Dill on, Double. man? I'm good, man. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. Man, you know? I got I got to say it, man. Like, man, you one of them guys that I get excited about when I get to interview you because I know the history of the city, man. Everything that went on to where the music just, you know, pivoted at, you know, platinum, you're a platinum artist. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. man, hey, 15 years? Yeah. 15 I mean, year anniversary for, for the ice cream paint job? And the first album. And the first yeah, album. You know Stop wow. playing, man. Congratulations, I, man. I appreciate it, man. You know, I'm trying to be on my LeBron James right now. I'm trying to you know, get excited <laughs> about that longevity. You yeah, know? I'm, I'm man. Still putting up numbers, you know? Yeah. Wow. So that's where I'm at with it. It can never be old. That song, when anybody you mention into, oh, yeah, I know that song. I remember that song. <laughs> that's, that's a what, classic for that's sure. That's what the guys just said yeah. when they was here. As soon as I uh, said the road, they said ice cream paint job. Uh, and they were from uh, uh, LA. LA, yeah. So that's crazy, man. Shout like out to LA, man. Shout out to LA. Yeah, they broke. That's what he said. That's exactly yeah, what he man. said. California really showed love with that, uh, along with a few other records. Get big, wire to the T. They mm -hmm. was really, you know, what I'm saying, showing a lot of love and really embraced me, you know, out there. So I, I, anybody that be coming from that West Coast, man, I just be having a special love for them because I know how much support they gave me. And then obviously over the last 10, 15 years, I've been living back and forth. So I really understand that LA culture, that that Cali culture. So. I, I love hearing that. Wow. What makes a what makes a city like Cali embrace an artist that's not from out there? Is it when um, you do a certain song? Is it the beat that you use that's more like their style of beat, it's or what is it? It's the combination of everything. It's like that's part of it. You know their tempo. Mm -hmm. You know we on we on different tempos, which was kind of hard. It was kind of um, hard for me to understand at first how I blew up in California right. because being a Texas artist at that time and even now. Just musically, the tempo is already different. So it's different sounds everywhere, everywhere right. across the country, across the world. But it's a big distinguishing tempo difference between Texas and Cali. And what I mean by that is just what people are accustomed to. You know, people are accustomed to a certain BPM and tempo out there on the West Coast and vice versa out here in Texas. That's completely different. So that's part of it. And then, you know, it's just the sound. And then, you know, uh, one thing that it, it was things that are similar between Texas and California too, like car culture. You know, yeah. uh, you know yeah. the car cultures are different, but car culture, culture is a big thing in both Texas and California. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when that sun came out and, and the visuals and stuff came out, they really you know gravitated towards right. that part as well. And then you know I think the rest was just you know it being a a, a breath of fresh air. You know at the same time. And uh, yeah, that, and with that song, you didn't mean to do that, but ever nah. the songs after that, since you found it out, do you actually like purposely, you know, look at those things when you're making a song? So yeah, I actually uh, no, I do a lot of different things. I already was one of the artists even back then that I liked it rapping on up tempo beats as well as slower mm -hmm. beats. So I used to experiment on that anyway on my mixtape. So I was. Mm -hmm. I was already kind of doing that, so but yeah, I do sometimes have a mindset of when I'm making projects and music, like you know, I ain't been out to the West Coast a while. I get with my producers or either my producers out here or my producers out there, and I just be in the mindset of you know what, 
I need to make something that I know Cali gonna rock with. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. This, this, they gonna naturally vibe to, right. but I'm gonna still be who I am and be me, but I know what they like and exactly. what they feel. So sometimes, yeah, I do do that. Because your fan base is out there, you don't wanna disappoint them. Nah, for sure. You know, you wanna keep them rocking. For Man, sure. I know life happens, bro, and I know you lost your father. Yeah. You know, last time we was here, we was, you know, pretty much piping up for that, for that hit a lick and all them songs you had put in that, in that, you know, on that, uh, that collective, Mm -hmm. Work that you had put together, yeah, Star and Baby, then, yeah, Star Baby. But you had a lot of stuff on there, mm -hmm. and then, then your father, you know, passes away suddenly. Rest in peace. I mean, um, and it kind of for me, I pulled back, you know, because yeah. I wanted to let you have that time. You no, know I what I mean? That. I and um, that. but but you know, I know you you know already how we feel about you. Mm -hmm. Like just to move on and try, you know, he what he would have wanted for you. Mm -hmm. You and your dad were real close. Yeah, huh? well, yeah, we was. That, yeah, and I, was I think that was something I knew. I felt that the way you were posting those pictures. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So man, I just know that. You know, you and I both know what he would have wanted and the way that he would have wanted things. So that I know that even drives you more. Yeah, you know no, what I'm for saying? Sure, for sure. And I think that's heavy, right? Yeah. What helped you over that hump? Uh, man, that's a, it was a lot of things. Uh, first of all, you know, me just knowing my pops, my my pops was a real. He was a hustler. He was a he was a person with a strong mindset. You know, he was a realist too. So. You know, during the process of when he got sick and, you know, all the way up into transition, like his strength is what kept me strong. Like okay. it was never a part of time when he was sick where, you know, if having conversations with him, you would even think that, you know, he going through this process. And I and I remember during that whole time it was just like, how is he able to, you know, be this way? And, and we can see that it's coming to, you know what I'm saying, an end, basically. Uh, but he already, even even prior, like my whole life, my pop's always talking about, like, you know, uh, understanding and accept the fact that, you know, we're going to transition one day and this and that. And he, and he would always talk about, you know, one day this is going to be here and you need to have a certain mindset. He was, So he was already prepared. Does that help? Prepared. Does it, that help it actually you? do. It actually do. At first, you don't think so because I I thought that, you know, uh, you know, sometimes you 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 don't know how people really feel until you know you how you go through these situations. And but when I really realized that my pops really stood on this and really felt that way, I mean, it was conversations we had you know before he passed. You know, him just talking about him getting ready to pass and how he wanted me to carry it, and he having this in a in a strong voice and a strong yeah, yeah, spirit yeah. and you know me it's hard I'm, I'm i'm almost about to break down but at the same time seeing him strong for real and, and i could tell it wasn't masking it was just like he really liked this you know and that helps a lot you know so with me it was my first time ever going through something like that with somebody so close obviously i've lost people right. before but you know nobody's really closer than your parents if y'all were close you know oh what yeah saying? for and sure the reason why i ask you that because um, I think I've been doing that for the past, I want to say, six or seven years. I've been telling my kids, I said, baby. I do the same tomorrow thing. Tomorrow is not promised. I always do that. Um, and the reason why I do it, not just to say it like that, meaning, and really try to implement that in their head, because I've had a friend who, her son, when he lost his first close person, which was his grandparent, he all actually like had a mental breakdown, like mm. like really affected mm. him to a point where he couldn't function for a while. Mm. And me witnessing that was a case where I'm like, I don't wanna leave my kids handicapped in that way. Yeah. So, and when I asked her, she's like, we've never spoken about death to him before at all, ever. Cause parents, people don't wanna talk to their kids about death. Nobody wants yeah. to talk about death, Not you facts. know what I mean? Or even to their loved one to say, how do you want, you know, do I wanna be buried? Do I wanna be this? Nobody wanna talk about death because not to say that you think you're gonna live forever, but you, they don't want to talk about it because I feel like they think that if I talk about it, it's gonna come quicker, yeah, type of yeah, thing, yeah. you know. Yeah. But it's just preparation. So I try to tell my kids, let me tell you, this is what I want you to do if this ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not talking about burial or none of that stuff. I want you to move on. Mm -hmm. I want you to be strong. Mm -hmm. I want you don't let this affect you because this is life is a cycle. Yes, you know what sure. I mean. For so sure. yes, you're gonna be hurt. You're a human being. Cry it out. Do whatever you need to do. But you need to move on and be the person God intended you to be. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. And that's how my pops was. Like I know, I just know my pops in his mindset. Like he definitely want me to keep going and grinding. And I know he wouldn't want me to be in a in a a, a, a phase of energy that don't help promote the family and exactly. and, and that type. And so I have to 
become what he was to the family, I have to become that, you know? And I already knew that, but once it happened, then, you know, it changes the whole thing. Exactly. So I really oh, yeah. just really go into that space for a minute. But just me knowing my pops and knowing it, it really helped me be strong because I know he was strong the whole time. He was the one going through this. He was the yeah. one sick. Yeah. He was yeah. the one in pain. He was the one transitioning. Yeah. He went through that, you know? So it's like, how can I really feel, you know, uh, obviously I'm hurt and, 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 you know, I'm sad about it. But at the same time, how can I not be as strong as he was when he was the one going through that and I was there the whole time, you know, and saw it. So that helped me actually be strong through the process and be strong for the family and just knowing my pop's mindset, knowing that he would want me to be strong and he was strong at the same time. And uh I mean he was prepared, you know, and and, and that he and he and he was going through a lot of pain and he was sick in in the end. So just seeing him be able to get past that, I was that's a that's a relief for me to know that he was able to get past that uh, that part where he was actually in a lot of pain and a lot of suffering, and you know, to see him go through that and know that he's not in that no more, that uh, that also helps a lot too. Wow, man! You know, um, one thing I can say, man, is when it, when it go going back to the music, like you know, Dallas is, and just the area we in the South. Like, what are you seeing when it come down to? Uh, the music, are you liking what you see? You got this four bats guy, shout out. Um, you got Big X, you got uh, D Baby, and in, in, in the new, I'm talking about the newer wave people, yeah. Uh, Ma that Mexican OT, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. you got these guys, yeah. these new people, man. So it's like, uh, what do you, uh, what do you think about the way that the music is, is moving when it comes to the newer, the newer think, type music? I think it's a lot of good artists out there, you I know. Think four bats is more R&B, right. Yeah, I guess you can put that in for in, in you know. R and B. Uh, but you know, some of those names you name, I I think it's a lot of good artists out there with good flows. Uh, they bring in uh, some newness to the game. Some of them are are are, are bringing. I like what Big X and, and Mexican OT doing when it comes to being Texas representatives. You know what I'm saying, and bringing that energy and doing the thing on way. Uh, the four bats. I've heard a couple songs, a few songs. He's real new. He he real new. So, so I, I heard really, Kate Kanye shot yeah, him, him out. I saw him. I saw him. So he in a good space. I just haven't heard enough yet to really be able to like dissect that. But so far, so good. Like the music sounds good, and I'm a music person first. I I like the way stuff sounds. So right now I'm seeing it good. Like you know, people making good music. Are you making good music? And you got good character. Like you you cool with me? Like I'm wow. I'm on. I, I I just like I said. I, I just look at those as the newer wave guys. You know. Am yeah. I right on that? Yeah. Is it anybody else? Did I leave anybody out? From Dallas, I mean, well, just from Texas, Texas, just yeah, Texas. Texas. You got yeah, you got OT, you got X the plug, you got four bats. Uh, uh, that's on that wave. Uh, I mean, it's it's a lot of people in, in that space, but I think they're more they're on more the, they're they, more on the mainstream. They're, they're on the mainstream space. Yeah, that's from here, yeah. So yeah, I, so I think I hit ones. it. I think I hit it because I be trying. You know, I'm old, so I'm trying to make sure I don't just miss nothing. Mm. You know, like niggas say that nigga old, he don't know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I want to make sure I stay in the know or either find out through somebody. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I think like like when I think about you and the move and, and the way that you move. How important is it for a person, and you'll know this, like to get that big song, like to have that big song? I don't think Big X got that yeah, gigantic yeah, song right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I don't think Mexican OT got that yeah, gigantic no, song, that, yeah, that yeah, yeah, platinum nah, hit. It's, it's, Am I right? Nah, you you right, and that's their next move. You know, they they're everybody do it differently. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they're in a space to where that's the only thing that they need to do, or or that's something to check off the list. They're in a space to where if and when they create that big song, it's going to be huge. Huge. You know, so, yeah, but, you know, that's kind of a, man, that's 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 kind of a thing, though. You know, it depends on what type. Some, some artists may not ever have those type of records, but they could have, uh, uh, still have a, a, a great career, a long career, or even bigger career. You know, so that's all in the structure of how you are as a songwriter and an artist itself. So, you know, but yeah, they definitely in the space. So, so the the four bats, the, he's having that type, them type of records. The the way he's looking, like he's headed he, that he's, way. Yeah, he's having those type of records. You know, OT and uh, X Plug, yeah. they're, they're more in that that mid lane to where it's more of them just being consistent, dropping stuff and, and being being about the culture and how they move and this and that. And and definitely, they should be trying to. Check off that out the box, box that off the check that off the off the list of making a big record. 
Because that's all they, they they would need to get into that super duper mainstream space. And I don't like to use the word mainstream. I'm just saying, like, in that in that space that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, man, they they there in their own way, and and they you know they being who they are. So that's really actually more important. You get into that space, being who you are, doing what you're doing, and not trying to force that. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, because you know that there are levels. Like There's definitely when you, levels. When you look at the from Travis Scott to whether it be Beyonce them or whether it be Megan, it's th- oh, there Post are levels. Malone's, yeah. Post Malone, Drake. Mm. Mm. We know that there are levels. That's mm. all I'm saying. All these great artists, yeah, they the dopest artists and they young and they coming with it. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying you got you can't ignore the levels. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Am I right? Not facts. You can't. You can't, you know. But at the thing thing about levels is that's almost a decision between you as an artist and you and your team of how far you want to take it too. Okay. You know, because you can be at a level and if you consciously want to get to that next level, you can do it. You know what I'm saying? But it, it, it take a lot to do that. Some able, some artists are capable of doing that. Some ain't. And some don't necessarily try to do that. And some shouldn't do that. It's really more about being the character and who you are more so than anything. And if you can fit that in and to, cause you don't ever want to go up to that next level, not being who you are. Cause you can, you can, that'll actually happen and it won't be as comfortable. It won't be as fun. E- even if you have having success to the outside world. So I think when it comes to like the big extra plugs and OTs, it, it is more about them being comfortable with who they are. And if they look at uh, the next level as a next level, then they should be trying to get there the way that they are and, and expanding on who they are. Then, you know, cause sometimes you have situations like that where people come force it. You know, which can happen, but sometimes in the long run, that's not the best way to do it. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, I think, but I think collectively, though, I think they are doing some good stuff collectively for sure. Wow. I I, I really, really, really love uh, the, to hear Big X music, bro. I can listen to it all day. Mm. That nigga really. He got dude, a nice flow. His nice flow, voice, his nice cadence, flow. Yeah. and the, he pick his beats right. He know how to pick music. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That big nigga be jamming. Like, yeah. ain't no, hands down, one of the coldest Big niggas round and the big niggas should be proud. You no, know what facts, I'm saying? Facts. He definitely, he definitely, you know, putting on for, for that space for sure. What are you, what are you doing with this? You got a new weed strand? So yeah, yeah, the weed a strand legal that, weed strand, like, like, strand like, like, and, and how do you? Is it in Oklahoma? So well, talk to me. We, we got to go back to the 15 year right. anniversary of ice cream paint. Okay. Out. So this is a whole rollout. This whole anniversary is a rollout. You know. Um, it's not just you know about the song. It's about it'll, it'll turn into a world itself. So what I what I got now? Shout out the Rogue Shop dot com, man. Shout out the Rogue Shop uh, company uh, that I partner with. Uh, I have always wanted to create a marijuana strain. It, it's not an easy thing to do because we're doing it for real. You, we're not just white labeling some tree that's already out and then saying it's this. Now we have to really grow it. We we grow wow. it. We had to you know grow it out in Oregon. You know what I'm saying? Right now, we, we're growing it out in Oregon. And now, you know, we got the, the, the shop is in Wisconsin. And then we got a uh, farm out here in Midland. Midland, o- o- Odessa, you know what I'm saying? And Oklahoma. So we kind of everywhere with it. But the, the main the main farm is coming from o- from Oregon. Wow, wow. And and we're transporting everywhere. But we're, we're doing two different things. You know, we're, we're doing, uh, we're, we're in the process of creating the TAC strain and we got the THCA strain. The TAC strain is is the is the is the legal side and is how we able to sell it worldwide. You wow. get what I'm saying? Wow. And uh it's ice cream paint job strain. So hey. the name of this actual strain like is it's called it's ice cream paint job and uh it's 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 some fire and then on top of that it's coming off the heels of this anniversary. So we for the roll this out. You know, March twenty second is actually when we actually roll Rolling it out. out. Yeah, yeah. And how excited that, is that? How, how excited are you about it? it? It's it's super excited because after we created the strain and created the label and, and you know um, came up with the concept and everything of how we marketing it, I actually decided to make a song for it. You wow, know that's hard. And the song like is that. actually Ice Cream Paint Job Part Two. I was wondering. <laughs> really? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So wondering. Does it sound like the first one? So I got with I got with Digi Norm and, All too, right. and too much. Too much is who originally made the Ice Cream Paint Job beat. Okay. You know, and 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 Digi Norm. Most of my production in general come from them too. You know what I'm saying? And then my Cali producer. I got four main producers: Digi Norm, Too Much, Q Smith, and. God damn it, Dupree. God okay. damn it, Dupree is my LA producer. Those the four. I mean, I I I I do some production with everybody when it comes to me. But for the main part, if I drop a project, 
if I was to drop 10 projects, 80% of that production will come from them four producers. So with that being said, I, I got too much and DigiNorm together to create a 2024 version of That's hard. the ice cream paint job. So it, it the do you, what, the, Are you oh, nervous man. about this? Because <laughs> when you come behind a song like ice cream paint job, yeah. people going to have yeah. some big nah, expectations, I, facts, man. Facts, facts. Did you See, even not, think about that? Yeah, I thought about that for sure. See, this is, this is what I'm doing with it. And this is what I did. Like I never try and you never try and compete with classic. You know, you don't try and beat it. You don't try and outdo it. You know, you actually kind of compliment it. So, for instance, this track is a different flow. You know, I come with a whole different flow on this track. You know, I, I changed the tempo of it. I sped it up a little bit. Uh, I made I made it a sound. It's a little darker, but it sounds like the beat, but it's a little darker. Norm added some drums to that. It made it even harder. And, and the, the way I'm on it, oh, I'm killing it. You get okay, what I'm saying? Okay. But I don't try and do recreate nothing on this song. And the ice cream paint job... Obviously, the original song is about cars. <laughs> this so version is, is about, about weed. weed. Yeah. yeah, because I got an actual string. You get what I'm saying? So it's I, it, it made sense for me to do this. And I just felt time. And I also want to start a trend with other artists, especially legendary artists and digital, because I really think it should be a lot of part twos or a lot of songs. Yeah. And I know people don't, when you think about it, you it's not... Do See, people have part twos to any nah, songs? It's, it's always not, remixes. That's not, really, you, that's not, not a not, thing. That's not that's a not thing. It's always a remix. I like that. So it's like, that should be a thing. Because it's not like you should be trying to replace it. Like, this will never replace Ice Cream Paint Job. This is a dope record that you're going to... See, one thing about Ice Cream Paint Job, the original, it was a fun song, spring, summertime. It made you feel a way. It was fun. This still gives you that feeling. But it brings a new... It, it sounds like if I made it in 2024. You but the difference saying? is like when when I think about somebody saying a part two, I'm thinking, okay, you left me at sort of like a cliffhanger with your first song, and you continue it like a story, like like R. Kelly. R. Kelly did his chapter hell one, a, part, two, part two, yeah. part two, yeah. part three yeah. coming. Yeah, but but then the thing about life is always a part two. Everything is a story. Mm -hmm. Everything. It's like if you think of anybody, any situation, any artist. No matter where they are right now and where they were, it, wherever they are right now is a continuation. Whether right. it's up, down, whatever, it's always a part two in everything in life. Right. It's about really bringing that and painting that picture. Got so it. I, I really want to inspire that also with this type of record because I think it should be a lot of part twos mm. of, of a lot of different records. Right. But yeah, to, when I really thought about it, I did think for a minute, I was like, should I really touch this? But I was like, you know what? I'm going to touch this. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and, so uh, do you smoke? Yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I wouldn't even be doing a strain if I want to smoke. That's, that's why I'm checking. I'm yeah, checking. Man, I, I don't know. Songs. So, <laughs> so, so let me ask you a question. With mm -hmm. this strain that you did, how many times did you like? Like with, I never created a strand, but yeah. like, did you try to yeah, be like, back and forth. We no, went, you yeah. gotta, you gotta make yeah. this a little bit. Yeah, so, yeah. how could you describe your strain? Like, because if you went back and forth, like from the beginning, how could you explain what it first started off at and what it is today? So. I'm gonna talk about. I'm not gonna talk about the THC part yet because right. that part is a special part. But I'm gonna talk about the THCA part, strain and how we did it. You know, yeah, we definitely went back and forth. See, the thing about THC is more like it's a it's a faster high. You get there faster for a the short THC. amount of time and okay. you're able to f f focus. Okay. You know, like so. Let's just say, uh, you know how people can. It depends on your tolerance too, but just mm -hmm. say you know how you could go somewhere and be stoned. Where they say mm -hmm. stone, you out of there. That's mo mostly what THC weed that's strong, and then you know some people can function out there, some people can't. But with THC, you get this same level of high. You get there faster, but it's shorter. It's a shorter high, and you can able to function. Like I come do this interview, this this and that. So going back and forth, you still want you want to get. I, I like hybrids the most. Really? You know, yeah, yeah. I like Why? hybrids. You know, well, so. I like sativas and I like indicas. Right. Obviously, sativas are usually one more is uppers. a body high. Yeah, one, one is, is a, it's an upper and more of a head high. Right. And the, the indica is more of a body, body high. high. And you right. know what I'm saying? Uh, and I always like balance. You know what I'm saying? So I, I like the because Sometimes, like if I'm in the morning, wake up in the morning, I actually prefer a sativa in the morning. Right. Which a lot of people still like indica in the morning. Really? I prefer a sativa in the morning. You know, if I if I'm choosing. But it, throughout, throughout the course of the day, and especially nighttime, it's just more when I'm 
for the majority of the time, I would rather have an indica than a sati- sativa. Right, because you want to relax. Yeah, right. but hybrids, I get both. I get like what I like about sativa and the feeling I get, I get that from a hybrid. And I get okay. the, so you get the best of both worlds, basically. So doing that is how I did it, you know, and I wanted to try different kinds to see what was going to make me actually have an effect that I like. Mm-hmm. And it was the hybrid, and we we got there. So it was kind of like a uh, 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 so this is it was a trial mixture. error type thing, but it really wasn't because the people who I'm doing this with are professionals. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I you know tell them what I'm looking for, and they and and they was able to pinpoint it. You get what I'm saying? So we didn't have to go too much into the trial and error. Once I found what I like, you know, we we did that. So so this is the, this is what you're producing to everybody. Th- yeah, will be a hybrid sort of like in yeah, between. So this, yeah, and yeah, and it's gonna give you that. It's gonna give you that that yeah that balance. And you can smoke it in the morning, you, you afternoon, can, night, yeah, you whatever. Can still function, you know, it's legal too. I've you right. this. On, you'll literally be able to order this off the internet. We can s- ship it to you it anywhere. Your house, and and you ain't gotta worry about no police. Nothing. Really? You ain't gotta worry about the stuff that you think you would have to worry about. You know, this is just like if you went to the store and bought tequila. How can you do you that? And especially places so, like to Texas that it's not legal. Yeah, but well, because TACA is the, the we. I, it is legal. The, the the strain we got and the way we got it set up. Now, once again, so it's not no delta eight stuff. I, 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 ain't gonna, I ain't gonna tell. Nah, I, I ain't gonna tell too much. But I'm also doing this with the best people that you can do this with. Yeah. Okay. We kind of ahead of a curve on what we're doing, but it's all legal. So I don't want nobody to think like we're doing some. Uh, uh, we're just ahead of a curve. The okay. people who I'm dealing with been on this for years, and and you know we stepped into the space where. We able to be one of the first to do this, you know what I'm saying? And so if that's, that's the case, thing. what's the website they can go order it from? Rogueshop.com, R O G U E S H O P dot com. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Uh, and it's ready when? It, so the ice cream paint job strain. By the time y'all see this, because I don't want to throw a date out there, right? It's gonna be out. You know what I'm okay, saying? Got and, it. And, and yeah, so you you go to, but also go to rogueshop.com because they got a whole lot of other stuff. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it ain't even me about promoting them just because of my tree. I done tried all their products, you know, and they, and they really legit. You feel me? <laughs> all I the tried products. All the, yeah, yeah, the, the edibles, you know what I'm saying? The uh, the gummies, the, uh, uh, you know, brownies, the the tree, everything they got, you know what I'm saying? It is legit. So rogueshop.com is, uh, is, the, is the company, man. So, so yeah, every I, time I, like I like see you, you're going to be with your strand all oh, the time. Sure, I, sure, want, I just sure. want to tell you, man, I'm so, I, I always, I, man, ever since I met you, man, Man, I love the the way you are, man. As far as an independent entrepreneur, you know, like you figure it out every time. You know, you still dealing with the Cowboys, and oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm always locked in with the Cowboys yeah. and the Mavericks. You know, I did and the Mavericks. Did, and they, the uh, Mavericks, you did, did the anthem, season, yeah. I did the anthem in the season opening this year. We've been doing something for the playoffs. Yeah, you know, uh, they got me at the March 13th games. We're coming up soon, so. The Maver- anything anything in the city, man, with with the sports team, I'm locked in with them, man. Wow, how you big know? is that to, to keep that? I mean, I, you see people do certain things with certain people, but to see you, you know, in the longevity of being connected to the Cowboys, yeah, you and Mark Cuban, him being on your early videos and stuff, mm-hmm. like, how big is that to keep the 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 connection? It's it's man, for me, I try not to force it. I just I just know that I'm a real natural. Cowboy and Mavericks fan, so I lead with that. I will actually I lead with me being an artist that represent the city first. And when you think about the Cowboys and the Mavericks, what's the what's what, what, what become before that? Their names, the C- Dallas. Dallas. Dallas is before the Mavericks, and Dallas is before the Cowboys. And I'm born and raised in this city, so the teams, you know, I represent the city. So it's a natural thing for me to just be natural, and I'm a natural fan too at playing sports and being. Growing up a Cowboys fan and Mavericks fan, so the longevity part come from me not forcing it, being who I actually am, but also intentionally being in that space as well. So it's a combination of everything, and that's I think that's more so the fact than me trying to because I'm always end up in rooms where these people are at, and the energy is always gonna come back to me because I I actually been putting on for this place for a long time and still do it, and it's just who I am. You get what I'm saying? Like it's just who I am. My son named Dallas. You get what I'm saying? Hey. So, you know what I'm saying? So like it's just I think the combination of all that is how I do the longevity and how the longevity with them because it's real. You know what I'm saying? Like if it was a person that was meant to do this for the city, I've come to find out that that's who I am. You know, so uh Wow well, I, yeah. I wanna ask you about like when I had Kiki on here, he talked about uh um we talked about Snoop Dogg. Uh when Snoop Dogg came out and this was a while back, but he did he did come out and he was talking about how the streamer the streamer wasn't paying like it should. Mm-hmm. And look, he had a different take on it because one thing he said was the fact that um, 
we didn't understand because we don't understand the streaming. But he, he was like, we don't understand how cassettes was made. We didn't yeah. understand how the records was yeah. made. But he still say that there's benefits to having this music today because when you roll it out, you get to go do shows. You get to go do a lot yeah, of stuff if you facts. roll it out correctly. Facts. So it's the same. To, for, for Kiki, it was a, he feels like it's the same nah, thing. And he you read about that. So he, you you agree yeah, with that as well? You know, like you got to figure it out. It's right? about figuring out, figuring it out, and balancing it out. You know, uh, streaming. You know, somebody stream your song whether they versus them buying your song or buying it off a of CD. That may be you might have made less money from that particular transition, but streaming allows it to instantly go worldwide. You get what I'm saying? So it, it gives you another chance in other areas to make more money than you would make in in the CD area. So it balances out, but you you have to be the the person and the artist and have the team to put yourself in a position to do that. You figure it out, like you say, and you and you really just you really gotta. That's why you really have to do this from a state of being passionate about the music. If you making good product and you really putting the work in, it just always pay off, you know? So as an artist, instead of trying to get scared when new trends come and this and that, you just got to focus on making music that you love and people love and, and you're going to get in those positions to where you'll be able to balance out them other areas that you may was unsure about. You yeah, because cause Snoop is a hell of a marketer himself. He yeah. he probably and market I, better than anybody. Yeah. If and he and wanted also, to do music, yeah. he can throw that out yeah, and fact, still he's going to blow fact. it and no I matter think, what. I think when somebody like Snoop is saying that, I think he's really fighting for the artist. I think in his own way, he's doing that more so for other people. Not necessarily. Himself. I, yeah, I don't think Snoop is in a space where he's looking at this and he's really upset about Oh, I'm supposed to be at this much, but I think you know he knows people around him are feeling that way, and he's in a high spot. So he's kind of saying that outward to look out for other artists and newer artists, and and, and it, it, whether he's right or wrong about it, that's his intention. I feel like when he's saying stuff like that, but look, Kiki is actually 100 percent right about how he, you know his perspective of it. I gotta ask you about, and you don't have to answer this, or you can, or you can be truthful, or you can lie about it if you want to. Um, did you get those Trump shoes? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I ain't got them. The gold with the teeth. But you know what? I what you Joe got, got some. They looked it clean. What did you buy some? That, I, them hoes was clean. I, 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 I probably, it, it ain't got nothing to do with Trump and politics. I probably just wouldn't buy them because it's just a lot of shoes I wouldn't buy that I like. But if if he sent them to me or somebody sent them from a the team, oh yeah, I, 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 would, I would rock them. And <laughs> if Joe Biden drops some shoes that I like, I'll rock them. So I, I don't really go into the space of like just not liking something because everybody don't like it. And that, man, I'm not that type of person. Like, but at the same time, you know, uh, uh, unless I really feel that way. Now, if I really feel that way and something happened that really not, nah, then, yeah, I'm just not rocking with you because I ain't rocking with you. But if, I, if I'm if i just looking at the shoe value of it, like those were shoes. That, they want like 400 for them. I mean, that ain't that bad. That ain't bad. That ain't bad at all. And, 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 you know and he had them for four. Uh, and you. Uh, uh, like if his team gifted me those uh, shoes, I, I would be lying if I said I wouldn't take them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, but am I going to go buy them? More than likely, probably not. But Let's even go. when you're talking about his shoes, you know, for some reason, what I think about with that shoe, I, I know that he designed it for us. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> what does that look for right there? I, I mean, but you know what? This us. is why I, I see people talk about this. This, this the thing that people. This is what Trump made people do respect about him. This is what he did do. He ain't never tried to hide what people w want him to hide or other people will hide. He come out and say, he will say that he did that. Like, if he if he say he gonna do something to get the black vote, at least Trump will go out and say, I'm doing this to get the black vote. Now, that part, so that's the part, you right. It, he didn't make that for the people that normally fight with him. We all know that. But he, Trump plays on his celebrity. He's been a celebrity before he was a, a, a president. So he, he got a different angle of approach in his team or whatever. But you're right. They definitely did that for that reason. <laughs> yeah. They definitely did that for right now. So that's why I say, like, I'm just not a person where I'm, I'm lighthearted when it comes to it. I just don't get emotionally tired over politics like that because it's a never-ending cycle if you do. Uh, you, yeah. you will never like one side all the way. People who I've seen terrible stuff that Joe Biden and the team done. I've seen terrible stuff that Trump did. I've seen great things that came from both ends in different ways. So I'm, I'm just never going to tie myself to that. It, it can be whoever the president in my mind is. I'm going to have to survive anyway. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It can be benefits for 
one side, whatever, but you you don't know what it's gonna be. You get what I'm saying? So I don't really get into that that side of politics, politics. where people get so passionate about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I don't laugh at it. I think it's funny. I think when Trump do unintentionally racist stuff or intentionally racist, I I think they both funny because I would never let that hurt me anyway. Yeah. Just like if I see a racist out there, as long as he don't put his hands on me. I've been in a situation where I've seen somebody be racist and I genuinely thought it was funny. Not because uh, I think racism is funny. It's just that seeing somebody really passionate or mad sometimes humors me because yeah, I don't yeah. feel that way. Yeah, it don't you know, even so it's like you. It don't matter. You trying to make me mad by saying some words is more hilarious than it is angering to me. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm just that type of person And it in makes them more angry when you do that. <laughs> that it makes them more angry. So when I see Trump doing some stuff like that and he's catering I think that's funny in his own way, even if he's intentionally doing it or unintentionally doing it. It's just like, that's just a funny concept to me. It's not going to make me personally go buy the shoes. But at the same time, like I say, if if I if I went home and I had a gift box from the Trump team, I'm going to keep the shoes. Like, mm-hmm. I ain't going to lie. You know what I'm saying? You're right. I got to yeah. ask you this, too. And I know you probably don't want to talk about it, but we, you know, you, you met Diddy and you've talked to Diddy and yeah. y'all been yeah. partners, you know what I'm saying? And there's some pictures of you and Diddy together, your videos with yeah. you. Meek Mills is going through it right now for some yeah. of the videos, some of the pictures. Did you yeah. I don't know what kind of video. Yeah. Wait a minute. Nah. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did he go where? To any of them after nah, after parties? I, I ain't hit none of them after parties. You party, never did man. go to the party. He came and came to the city during All Star Weekend. He showed me love on radio. You know what I'm saying? And he showed uh, he came to my video shoot in Atlanta and was in the, on the remix. And every type of conversation or time we was ever in public, I mean ever together, it was in public. <laughs> <My> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like broad public. So. I hate Diddy going through that because I don't know what's true and what's not true. It's it hard. The internet it's hard. hard on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we all, it's two things. It's one thing we all know about Diddy. We know he's one of the most successful pi- uh, pioneers and business mm-hmm. people that we've ever seen, especially in music. Can't take that away from him. I've seen him do great things and I've heard bad things that about him. I don't know what's true and what to decipher, but at the same, at the, at the end of the day, whatever is going to be, if, if it's really, if he really is this person they painted, that's gonna crumble anyway. If if it's not that, then it's gonna, you know what I'm saying? He gonna stay afloat. And I don't know what agenda is going on, somebody after him or whatever, but I, I hate to see it. To be honest with you, I hate to see it between what they saying about him, Meek, any, any of those, because these are these are powerful artists of our time. Whatever they did, whether they, 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 they Diddy was behind uh, 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 Biggie Smalls and a lot of other artists that Impacted our whole way of oh, yeah. thinking. You know what I'm saying? So oh, yeah. I hope the things that Mary they're J. Saying, Blige. Yeah, I hope the things that they're saying about him is not true. But at the same time, like whatever whatever he got going on is whatever he got going on. So if it is true, that's well, that's his situation. I can tell you right now, <laughs> they they really not uh they're not easing up on him on this internet. This yeah, internet yeah, yeah, is nah, not that, yeah, yeah, yeah. This internet yeah, is yeah, seriously yeah, yeah, moving yeah, towards yeah. whatever they want to say. Yeah, they got all yeah, these yeah. visuals and it's just a tough situation yeah. and yeah. it's hard to get around it when it comes Okay, hypothetically. Mm-hmm. You and Diddy been around each other. Mm-hmm. It comes down to it hypothetically. He's he's going through situation. He calls or they call you and say they need you to be a character witness for Diddy. Do you go? Cares a witness of Diddy? Yeah, like to say, hey, man, you know, I'm not that guy they trying to paint the picture of me to be. This is, so I'm just coming this, from I, the dome yeah, right now. Yeah, so this would be me. Uh, because I know that I honestly never witnessed a situation, I wouldn't be scared about that. Yeah. Now, I, it ain't nothing that I want to do just because it don't fit in the time scheme. It's my time schedule and what I would rather put my time on. So my first answer is going to be no. <laughs> for that reason but if, if I was just drug into it it wouldn't be nothing I would fear cause you know I can speak on every, everything you know what's crazy everything me and Diddy has ever done is on the internet yeah. literally yeah. every single thing any type of interaction we've ever had from K104 to it is. Video I seen that when I was looking at to, it to you know any wherever it's all on the internet anyway and them the only uh, interactions interaction I've ever had with them so I wouldn't have no fear I just tell them what I actually saw <laughs> and what I know and that's how I would do it. But my first answer would be like, man, nah, I ain't gonna waste my time. I'm gonna chill, man. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah, enough yeah, about yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, it's, but it's so funny because it seemed like, because even after the Cassie incident, yeah. for me personally, it seemed like everything started quieting down a little bit or leveling off where it wasn't so much of, you know, Diddy, what's going on. And all of a sudden, these other allegations, like every time it start 
leveling out, something else pops up. Somebody else comes out of the woodwork. So it's just the crazy thing is like, why didn't they all come out at the same time when Cassie was yeah. coming out? Why mm-hmm. you wait for and it to... And that'd be that part and right there. That'd be the part right <laughs> you see there. what I mean? And that's what, that's what muddy the water because it's like, that's what make you not know what's true or not because it's mm-hmm. like, you know, anybody who's in any, any position is going to have haters. It could be just a time where, okay, well, Diddy didn't sign me or Diddy didn't do this or he didn't give me this or whatever. This is a good time to jump on that or he said he, he cursed me out this time. It, I know a lot of this is just people that's mad at them and, or didn't like them for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah, and this is yeah. a chance to attack. But then it could be some of that. I, I, I would never put say that it, it ain't no. It could be no truth to that. It could be a lot of truth to Yeah, because I read something where it said that one of the young ladies um, who was pressing charges or whatever, she was underage at the time, and she's trying to stay anonymous. She don't want her name out there or whatever, but the judge is, trying, is about to rule or trying to rule to say that, no, if this goes to trial your name is going to be out there and diddy's yeah. lawyers are also saying if if they're crucifying me out public why should you your name be secure so to say you're coming at me your name needs to be out here as well no, you know but i guess she don't want her yeah. name to be out there and, but if and, you come into this case fact, and stepping and, and, into and, it and, 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 and that's 100 fact it's like if you go if you come to the case and you're willing to put somebody else's name and especially after so long and this and that you should you should be cool with your name coming out too. Mm-hmm. That will actually uh, make, that will give me more clarity. And people like me that got the mindset, I got more clarity because I look at stuff like that too. It's, it just it just breathes more trust and honesty when you're able to do that. When you're not, mm-hmm. it can easily look like, okay, well, y'all just want this man to you know, look a certain kind of right. way. But, uh, and this, this is the last thing I will say about that too. I, a lot, another thing that made me not believe so much of it is, is me being a public figure and being in the space of public, you really can't hide much. And I know Diddy is on a whole, whole other another level. level. So right. all the some of the stuff they say, man, it's no way these things could happen without it coming out in real time. Just because of what you I, people move in these spaces, and it's always other people. It's always cameras, this, this, and that. Some of the stuff I've heard just sound crazy because it's like, okay, if that really happened. That would have came out in that instant. No, but then back but then, then, but back well, then there well, was well, social well, media and well, stuff yeah, wasn't no, a point. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, they're speaking a lot of stuff back then. Yeah, that's what they know. are talking but about. A lot of, a lot of stuff, stuff. They, they're speaking on recent stuff too. Like oh, I've okay. heard, I've just heard a lot of crazy stuff. So okay. it's like it's one of the things where you can't. Some of it may be this, some of it be that. So yeah. you know, I just go. We just gonna see how it play out. Yeah, I keep hearing you about the me? old stuff, and I'm like, that's why they're coming out with all these old stuff. Yeah, but then yeah, yeah. you being a public figure, how many times in the past have you, you know, um, a girl came to you and talked to you or whatever? You'd be like, okay, let me see your ID before I even talk to you. Yeah. How I many mean, guys actually I, do that? But yeah, some of these females yeah, come yeah. in looking older than their I, age. Facts, facts. I just got good discernment. I never had an issue like that. And I was in a lot of spaces where it's things like that could have been the case. Uh, it was situations where if, if she even looked at like she wasn't that we wouldn't even let them be around Mm -hmm. but you know having a good team and people around me i always had people around me who have the same discernment i have or more so that's kind of part of it and then i'm never i was never like a loose cannon i know what you're talking about you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. i'm always mindful of everything so navigating and i've avoided those situations for for those reasons alone and yeah that's how how, how you cannot beat the internet uh my boy Shannon Shaw from Club Shay Shay, he come, <laughs> come out, you know, this morning, you know, he had his green on. Yeah, wasn't bothering that, nobody, you know. Yeah. Um, Chris, I man. mean, listen, man. Listen, all I'm asking is, man, can you, is it a thing where, okay. Shannon Shaw wore makeup one time, Okay. And mm-hmm. I and I like Shannon Sharp. I mm-hmm. love the show. When, when you say makeup, you mean like on the show oh, or yeah, just in it, general? It, on the show where oh. they made him up and it looked it so weird. The makeup, oh. you know makeup how they put him like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like the makeup. Yeah, it was just yeah, the makeup. Yeah, they, but yeah. it, he even said it. He came out and did a show and said it was too much yeah, makeup. Yeah, yeah, Damn, yeah, yeah, like they, yeah. they got me wrong. Yeah. Like a then, male makeup. Yeah, male yeah. makeup. Like then a, then he's at the game with this uh the the his, his stylist who is you know who's uh definitely from the LGBTQ you yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, then he's uh, now he gets out the truck and he's, I don't know who taking the picture of him, but he's you know is Shannon Sharp trolling? 
Or I, is this man, uh, you man, understand? I, I, I can't I don't I can't really you speak understand? To is he I'm asking I'm asking both of y'all. Or is he just something naturally just happening because he just had the biggest interview in no, there's no other interview. You think he's Listen, trying to stay relevant? There is no other interview on YouTube that is more popular than the Cat than Williams. Than the Cat with no other one has ever streamed it high. He mm -hmm. passed up Joe Rogan, who had 59 million. He's doing. He's at 60, 60 million now, and still going. Yeah. So you're saying that he's trying to stay relevant. He's trying to keep doing stuff. Is I'm that what you're trying I'm to say? I'm asking. Like, nah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm he, just asking. If that is happening, it, it he is happening for that case. He don't, man. I don't man. I'm not, I, I don't think know, they just man. catch him in bad angles. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, that's what they, I said. Because he just got out the court. Like, that, that last video I saw, I mean, that, <laughs> that's kind of trolling on the other end. Oh, like, yeah. He, he, I saw what they saw, but it wasn't like they just. It was like somebody just came out with the camera and just caught him like that, and he 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 like showing off his muscles. And so stuff. he gonna have so he wearing stuff, tight. Yeah, so right. I, I don't really look at that. <laughs> That's what I said so earlier. I, I think, but they make it sound like they make it sound like oh no man gonna be caught standing like that <laughs> even on the fly. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Anybody man, can be caught like that. that. Internet, they caught, Anybody can be caught like I that. I remember I got caught up. We okay, gonna, you remember then, when you had yes. my leg and. Yeah, things got a little see, difficult for yeah, me. See, and, and, they, like, and they put it out there yeah, like, oh, look at thing, him. The thing, too, is like, if, you what? Take, if you take a, a, a video of anything, you can freeze frame it at any point and make anything look like anything. Right. You know what I'm saying? And when you, you know, you when you steady talking and moving, it's so easy to do that. So, like, when I, I don't pay attention to stuff like that, too, because it's like... You got people that just trying to make content for the internet, and they know mm -hmm. what pe they know what people gonna react to. Mm -hmm. I think that video of him, that at least that particular one, I think that was more of that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't want to get caught in that type of like. It feels funny, but it's just like I don't know. That, that, I, I don't think I know he not trolling because he he don't have him got a troll. You know what I'm saying? He been he had a successful football career and he's having a successful. Oh, he's very successful. Exactly. I so love the show, man. You don't have to troll. You know what I'm right. saying? So. I think they just catching them in a bad light and they putting it out there. But, you know, <laughs> but then again, that's what be happening too. Like it just like it seems like when you start having that high level of sense, people just try and do that. Mm -hmm. So he may be just going through that phase where he got to get past it because it looked like they just attacking. I don't know why people mad at Shannon Sharp. No, but even before the Cat Williams, he did a he did a um, video. I remember because this was the I think this was the first time I've ever seen him because I never really just saw you know look at Shannon Sharp stuff. Yeah, but I saw this. Um, Real, where he was in his kitchen with some food, but he had his dog in his hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, See what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody, Stop playing, man. Man. everybody I mean, this was in the say. comments I, talking about cool that. I'm not with the like mail bags and the purses and stuff. Me like neither. That. I don't knock people for doing it, but that ain't my type of style anyway. I, they get so some real easy. The so, messenger bags. The, yeah, whatever. I, man yeah, purses. I don't, I don't like the man purses. And I don't like that on no man. But I, I wouldn't say if I saw a man with a man purse that he on the other side type. I ain't that. You know what I'm saying? But I don't like the man purses. Me neither. So I think the combination of all that, the man purses and the little dogs and stuff like that, it just don't help. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It don't help. That nigga trolling you know dogs. Mean, so like, <laughs> No, I, I just, um, man, I don't know, man. Like, when I look at what's going on for us in this internet world, man, Joe Budden, Joe Budden said something about the ladies. Like, the ladies' music is kind of disintegrating. Like, it's going yeah. away. Like, yeah, I saw did you see clip. that? Like, what do you think about that? I got to get I, you on that. Yeah. You got to give me your opinion. You're a music I, I, guy. Yeah. Nah, he was 100% right when he's not, it's not the female rap going on because the, what, the, the legit is going to stand. If you're a legit female, male, Whatever genre, race, you going to stand. What he was speaking on was the the little starter kit or the, the little kit where you go get a quote-unquote baddie and then you, 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 you get a body done and then you put it in the studio with a big producer and some writers and y'all make a song and she got the image and then y'all can blow the song up. And we've seen a lot of that happen. I, he's talking about that era and and I and I 100 agree with that. You agree you with it? I 100 agree with that because it's oversaturated. It's oversaturated, and then people it, it, the music ain't as good. You get what I'm saying? And it, after a while, people get tired of those tricks, and it just don't it don't hold, and it don't really sell. So I think that area for sure. But the the the, the real ones, it's a, it's a females rapper that's gonna stand. You know what I'm saying? Some that's just dope. You know what I'm saying? That they gonna stand because they talented, and and they got uh, the other packages as well. But just that whole little quarter that that kit where oh we just gonna go get a baddie, we gonna make it look good, and we are gonna write her a song, and then we are gonna put it with a big producer, and then we are gonna put it out with a big label. Yeah, I I, I agree about that. Yeah, I saw something that said, um, and tell me how. 
in what way do you think that this is so? Because um, I saw where Drake had posted and say that Sexy Red is his muse. <laughs> I, I didn't see that. that. I, I, didn't see yes, that. I saw right. it. I saw it earlier. Really? Yeah. And so, looking at her and her music and stuff like that, can you yeah. see that? Be, can I see her being Drake Muse? Yeah. Is he talking about from a real life standpoint? From a, like he he just real, mentioned that he, he didn't specify. Uh, oh, he threw it out there. I, I think Drake trolling. <laughs> I think he really. I think he really like sexy red and mean like cool with her. And yeah. I think he you yeah. know he done, they done befriended each other and I think he really have really did that. Uh, I, him, her being his muse for real. I think he trolling. <laughs> I think, yeah. You know what I think? I think he know that that would. Whoever he trying to make feel away, make a make them feel away. I you think, think it's that's more, what it is. I think it's more of a trolling type situation when he say like that. But I think he really is friend. I think he really. No, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, they, they, cool, they cool yeah, together. You know yeah. yeah, they cool. But can I get another song between you and Sauce Walker, man? Just, yeah, can you can you please get with Sauce Walker? Yeah, man, Sauce gotta, Walker, get with the road. Y'all give me a whole. I want a whole. I want about five, six songs, man. Yeah, I, I, got, you know I got another one for Sauce to hop on too. No, I, yeah. I chemistry was crazy. On I that like that song. Yeah, it was but I like Sauce the, too. I like the yeah, way he yeah. rap. He, he nah, talked about I, I Sauce. Like, I like Sauce because of you know not just even about the way he rap, which I like as well. But he also one of the ones that rep. He rep. Texas. Texas, you know, he, he like me. He, yeah, he, he like us. Yeah, exactly. He rep Texas. He, you know, he 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 rep Houston. He love Dallas. Yeah. He support yeah. Texas, and he really he don't support a lot of people from Dallas as well. So that's the combination. Of those two things why chemistry really came across because we did that record. It was flawless. Like so, yeah. I, I think we actually will have more music in the, in the future. I sure so can't know, wait. To, I can't wait to hear it, man. Because I know you gonna go in. I mm -hmm. know he gonna go in. That's gonna be real clean and crisp, man. Mm -hmm. I got a question. So. Are you a vision board type of person? It's crazy because I'm actually not, but my girl is. Okay. My girl, she is a a, a vision board professional, or whatever you want to call it. Okay. That. And, and she has kind of that kind of rubbed off on me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so I, I I start seeing like the benefits of doing stuff I'm like doing that, it. but now I'm a more, I, 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 I do the same thing in my own way. Right. I accomplish that same goal in my own way. Most of the time, I set my goals in my mind and I really stick with them. I write, I do write stuff down, don't get me wrong. I write stuff down, but the vision board and writing it out and doing that, I'm just not coming into that space because of, because of my shorty, man. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, but I, I respect it. Cause you know, sometimes people, cause when you just have it in your mind, it can be overclouded by other stuff that happens on a daily basis or whatever. But yeah. when you actually have it on a board that you can see it yeah, every day, yeah, you walk facts, past it, facts, yeah. there's no way you can, you know? Nah, so right, facts. the reason why it's a good thing you, you mentioned your shorty, because I love to see y'all pictures. Y'all be looking so cute on social media and stuff like that. Appreciate but um, do you have like a, a, a goal down the line to say, you know what? By this age, I want to get married. By this uh, age, I want to. Here we go. Here we go. By this. Here you know, we go. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. You know, men don't like hearing that kind of stuff. You put so, that pressure on it. So look, marriage is an energy, right? Okay. When 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 I come. Like even how me and her are is probably the first time I've been in that space, and I've been in spaces with you know different women. Right. You know, uh, to me that is marriage. You know Ooh. what I'm saying? Like, you know, we that we, union. We, we live together now. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, uh, how long y'all been together? We've been together. Don't get it wrong now. She might. Have seen it. <laughs> we've been knowing each other since 2019. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been knowing each other for five years. Okay. We've been in the space how we've been mm -hmm. for like the last year. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But we've been knowing each other for a minute. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That boy there, man, you, you don't know how you almost got him still. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You almost he answered, got him. He answered it how you he almost want. got that nigga, man. Uh, he don't want to let the cat out the bag. That's can the I get a song from you and Boosie, man? I'm just going to ask you, bro. I'm going out to Atlanta next I week. To, I went to Boosie Crib last year when he had the, I remember. Uh, Boosie gone wild. And uh, I had some, we were supposed to get in and get some work done, but I didn't stay out there long enough. Mm -hmm. He told me whenever I ready to work, just pull up to the crib because he got the studio there. And I know that if I pull up, we're going to get it done. So that's kind of on me. It's just, I, I need to get that done because I, I got records everywhere and I do got like a folder where 
this folder, it, 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 this, this literally called Boosie. It's records I do where I can hear Boosie on. Mm-hmm. And then, you know what I'm saying? So I just got to go pull up on them. And, and I, I'm, I'm going to make that a priority at some point for sure. Can we get, I'm going back in. <laughs> can we get Baby on the new ice cream paint job part two, <laughs> smoking and hanging I, out and having a good time? I, I, I called Baby the other day. I said, we got to bring the car back. Because, you know, the original car was, was, was yeah, Baby car. Yeah, and he saying? still got I it. I say for the visual, we got to bring that back which we're getting ready to shoot soon so I, that just remind me to follow up to see if we're gonna do that or not but yeah for sure you know uh it, it I, baby don't smoke so i doubt he'd be in there you know but i i think he'll i think he'll be dope for the visual for sure can the road go in again can the road get uh uh some more artists from texas and do something to where you could just basically have a like a, a you know a round of applause for all these different artists whether it be whether it be east texas whether it be houston whether it be san antonio yeah. whether it be you know what i'm saying yeah but can you put something together like start, that for I'm, me I'm, I'm working on Star Baby 2. That's what Star Baby 2 is. It's Star Baby 2. One was that in its own way, but now it, Star Baby 2 is exactly what you just said. So it's really me putting together, you know, the city and the people I like from the city and the people I like from the state on this project. And we bring in, you know, uh, the Dallas Boogie sound back. That's hard. You know what I'm saying? And we, and we, and we, we in that space right now so one of my projects that I'm working on is literally that and that's all I can really say can we get the road to come <laughs> go back to Grambling Prairie, well, Prairie View yeah. do something down there walk us back through the Man. history of who we, yeah, yeah nigga I'm real yeah, fly yeah, I nigga feel you, I feel you. Uh, walk us all the way through documentary yeah. style let us know pretty much how he became 6'3 I got a yeah. I got a song called PV Colors. I ain't released yet. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what project is gonna come out on, but it's definitely on a six three project. That's all right. And uh, that will that would allow me to go in this space whenever I release this now. song because I'm gonna obviously have to shoot the video down there in some way in that vicinity, and then I can I can implement that. Do you but, think that that song would be good enough? Because you know your song, I haven't heard it yet. Mm-hmm. That would be good enough to be even like a. PV um, anthem. anthem. Oh, for sure, one thousand percent. I made it to be that. To be that. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I already when I dropped "Get Big" that year, that was literally the PV anthem. They literally uh, every year they they do the. Uh, hey, Cash, what's that called? Well, uh, every year, you know when they had an amp, they step to uh, at the hump days. It be a song. Oh, the PV shuffle. Mm-hmm. So they they do a PV shuffle every year, and it's, mm-hmm. they use us. They pick a song, and that be the song every year. Wow. So when I did get big, that was literally that song, and, and uh, it was something else they used too. And they, I, I, of course, they, I made walk that walk and Holly Berry and ice cream. All that stuff was in that mix too. So this is specifically for that reason. So yeah, yeah. I'm glad you said Holly Berry before you get off here. Explain to me what the controversy was with Holly Berry. Man, you just I, brought I, it I, up. I'm gonna just short term it. I'm gonna put it in short because it, it's tell the little, truth. I don't want to hear what you told them other niggas. Tell me the truth. Yeah, I, I mean, I, the short. This form is boss talk. The short point, and I, and I'm gonna speak on it now. Just cause Sexy Red just sampled this song. She, she just what? Yesterday she just put out something on her Instagram and she knew she she said new music coming. She just sampled Holly Berry the original. Let's go. One tell me, on. give me the breakdown. Yeah, yeah. I got I mean, a minute. Like, I this, got time. This is how it was, man. Shout out to Superstar. Superstars from Colleen. I, we was at PV. I was popping at PV. Probably the hottest artist at PV. He had a lot of motion. He approached me to get on the song. We made the song at PV, and we and we blew it up at PV. And then I took it. Uh, he had it going in Colleen. I took it to Dallas and blew it up. I was doing a lot of shows at the time because I had walked that walk. Walk That Walk was not as big as it became. It was still in the early form, but I was doing a lot of shows getting booked all over Texas. So I took it to Dallas, Houston, and I was doing a lot of shows everywhere. We blew the song up. It got huge. It ended up hitting the radio. It ended up being the biggest song in Texas, Louisiana, Kansas, Oklahoma, this whole little region. Right? Why was that? Uh, Hurricane Chris team his label was looking for him a new single. It was like, it's time to put out a new single. They went to Playing Skills to get a beat from him. Playing Skills had just did a situation with Superstar. You know what I'm saying? Playing Skills told Hurricane Chris label that, hey, I got a record that actually, you know, he'll be good on. You know what I'm saying? He should hop on this. So he had hopped on a remix they made. And they, uh, uh, now when they did the remix, they just made a version. It was them on there. And they try to take me off of it. 
and I'm the one that blew the song up. When that when the word got out, you had the definition DJs at the time. The definition DJs was who I funneled the song through to blow it up. They was a big part of this song blowing up. When they heard that it was a remix coming out without the row on it, they was like, "We not playing that. Fuck, we not wow. playing this song." It 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 didn't get played and it died down and it just completely disappeared. So Hurricane Chris now, uh, but when that thing playing skills went to him was like. We should sell this song to Hurricane Chris. So they sold the song to Hurricane Chris. I didn't sign off on it. They ended up doing a deal. Um, and long story short, after that happened, uh, where I'm at, S- Superstar did his own situation with playing skills, and I didn't sign the playing skills. Wow. So I stayed my own artist. So they pulled me off the song, and then. They sold it to Hurricane Chris, and then they blew it up, and got he did it with his label. And I still had, was on the paperwork, so I still got the publishing and still stayed a part of it. But I didn't fight it because I had a whole lot of other stuff going on. Now this wasn't necessary. Hurricane Chris doing this; it was just his camp and his team. It wasn't like Hurricane Chris said, "I want to do this." They was aware of a big song. And that's how that song ended up. The, the, the mainstream world know the version of Hurricane Chris, but it was already a mainstream hit in the southwest part of the country, southeast part of the country, and that's what happened with that record. Wow! But this was before, right after that, in the midst of that happening, my other song was taken off, which was Walk That Walk. You know, it blew up, so I was doing that. This is pre Ice Cream Paint Job. This ain't even came out yet. So I, I had my own success and I wanted to be my own. I didn't want to sign the playing skills. Shout out to them. They Shout out to playing skills. They didn't have nothing to do dope. with them. I just wanted to have my own situation and be my own artist. Didn't make sense for me to do the deal, and that's where it went left. And a lot of stuff happened like that. Now that's the short version. That's of the it. short version. Did you yeah. and Hurricane Chris ever speak or talk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. So we, we beefed for a little minute. Oh, y'all beefed. We beefed. Like, it's old school now. <laughs> yeah, we we beefed because it was just misunderstandings on different sides. But we end up like seeing each other some years later in L.A. We squashed it. You know, he just recently did an interview somewhere. Uh, I forgot where it was, but he basically told the same story for the most part. Wow. Shouted me out. Shouted out Superstar. We got over that. But me, when I was beefing, it was before I was even having the success I was having. Once I started having my own success, I swept that on. You know, it, it, yeah. it just... It requires too much energy to beef. Yeah, you know yeah. I know you're so not that even about that. It ain't even about that. It's just I literally hit. See, now if I didn't have other stuff going on, I probably would have <laughs> been in there and fought through it and got what I really supposed to get. Even though I got good on paperwork, it was a lot more I could have got out of that. But why put that energy when I really was popping? I really had stuff going on. I really had mixtapes popping. You were still really making great music. Going. Yeah. And this was, like I say, this was pre-Ice Cream Paint Job. After that, I made a record bigger than that record. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was, for me, it was just like, man, I'm really this. If if I did, if I wasn't this and I needed this and it's the only thing I could do, then I'd sit there and fight it. But I was just like, it's going to work itself out and then it's working itself out. And, man, you know, but I, I love the fact that you, you know what I mean, you was able to understand how to keep making big songs and good music mm-hmm. and really, like you said, you were so hungry at the time is the way I yeah, look at it. Yeah, you wasn't I, even trying to hear yeah, none of that. No, I was in a space where I knew that like, I was getting close to getting where I was trying to get to and I had to put every ounce of energy and time into that. If I would have took that step the other way, I wouldn't be here talking on Boss Talk today. Yeah, yeah. It would have took me. It would. It would have shifted my whole trajectory mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. a whole different path. So I, I knew that then. Wow. If Mo Three was still living, I know you would have did some more dope music. Oh yeah. I remember oh, before he passed, you yeah. did that. That uh, why my face, uh, so, why my face so fresh yeah. when I found you know Watts on there with y'all. Yeah, I yeah, didn't yeah. even know he was dealing Shout with y'all. Us, man. But it, but but no, that was just like how much more music and 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 how 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 tough is it with him? You know, not being around to see the fruition of his career. I think the whole city missed three just because he's talented. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I think the, the whole city missed three because he was talented, and we all missed that talent that he brought. Uh, so I think we all took an L on that side, and we we and we don't we didn't get to see him grow to the level that he would have grew. He was at a high level, but he wasn't at his highest level. He would have still kept growing. Now, what people don't know is, man, three still got two records that I ain't released. What? Yeah, two hard records too. And you, you got, I you got own them, them or I, do they you? My, me they and him did them. We did them. Like we did them then, but you know. What I'm but saying? now I'm, I, I gotta they, say this. You, 
<laughs> Rain water don't be clearing stuff. They be holding nah, stuff back. Right. Do you own them or do I own them? No records and. Uh, me and Rainwater had a talk uh, not so long ago because he was going to come listen to the record and try and put on the album, but we just didn't catch up with each other. But he, whether it ended up being on his project or not, it's going to come out. You know what I'm saying? These records that me and three did in the studio, three want these records to come out. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, And Rainwater going to be cool with them coming out. Like, you know, okay. you know, like, I never taken nothing away from Rain and Three Connection because they, you know, they really was that. You know, so I was remember. Rain over there when y'all did them? Nah, Rain wasn't there. Rain was never like in the, in that part on that side of it. You know, what I'm saying that much. I mean, I know, I'm pretty sure it was a lot of times when him and Three was there. But me and Three had a relationship where we pulled up on each other. He pulled up on me. You know, for different things like that was my dog. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and so like we did those records and they dope. And I really can't wait for them to come out. Cause I remember when Why My Fade So Fresh. I didn't yeah. see th I didn't see Rain in there. It was nah, just nah, you and just me Watts and, Watts. and 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 yeah. Uh, three. Yeah, and three. Yeah, you know, and, and, and yeah, yeah. And we did it over there uh, with Doug. Uh, White boy Doug. Yeah, yeah, white yeah, boy yeah, Doug. Yeah, That's yeah, my boy. Studio, yeah, Doug, don't get it twisted, Doug. My yeah, boy now. Yeah, so he, we used his studio one day and we recorded that out there. But uh, we also had did a couple other records though. We had did a couple records for the females, and that was two records. What that, is these records about, man? You can at least give me that much. I told three that night when we did that. Why, why and how we did why? Why my face so fresh? Because I was already working on it for something random. But at this time, like. In Dallas, it's only really been three people that ever cut my hair. You know what I'm saying? Really, four my entire life. When I was younger, dude named Malcolm in the L used to cut my hair. Sip the surgeon cut my hair for years. Uh, he still cut it every now and then. My current barber, Fresh Cut Corey, shout out to him. He the one been cutting my hair for like the last five, six years. That's like my main barber. I, I got two barbers in L.A. But then it was a point where I think... Sip was in train. It was some Sip was traveling a lot. This one I was getting my hair cut by Sip before my homie Fresh Cut Corey, and like Sip just went on a craze where he was doing show. He was just always gone, and uh, I remember going to Vista Ridge uh, Mall for some reason. I ran the three, and he was telling me uh, he was up there getting his hair cut. His barber was up there. He was like, "Man, you need, you know what I'm saying? Come my, let my barber cut your hair." His barber actually hit me on the ground. You know what I'm saying? And I found out that, oh, this dude that hit me up on the ground, he was telling me we were going to cut my hair. So I went through there. He cut my hair. It was fresh. Like So me and three was getting our hair cut by the same barber at one time. And I was making that song, I think, for Sip the Surgeon. I was like, for some content, I was like, man, I'm going to make it. And then I ran the three, and we just did that. And I was like, it makes sense. What are we going to do? Just throw, he threw a verse on there. But that right after we did that song is when me and him started working. We just like, he was just like, let's work. Let's do something. And three was like, uh, he was saying something. I was like, look, bro. Look, we gonna make something that's that's gonna be we can put out there. So man, we gonna make something like that. He was like, all right, let's just talk about the females. Then he already knew what I was talking about. Like three, no, I ain't for the shoot thirty niggas on no song. <laughs> so I basically was telling three, like, look, bro, let's make something where I ain't gotta shoot thirty niggas on the song. He was like, all right, bet, let's talk to the females. So long story short, we made a couple of records for the females, and that was also some three dope. It like if you look at go listen to three female records, they they hard. So we made them kind of records, and they ain't came out yet, but they hard. Wow, that's hard, man. Shout out to Dizzy Norm and Q Smith too. They produced those too. Man, I, I can't like I said, I can't wait to hear y'all. You get that music out. <laughs> Your yeah. boy Rain, he come over and tease a nigga with a Mo3 song every now and then. Oh, and yeah. never will put this music out. <laughs> I'm so sick of these niggas holding back on the three music. It's sad, boy. Y'all yeah. niggas ain't right. Y'all got this hidden music. Y'all know it. Y'all, I'm just going to hold on to it. I yeah, got to nah. drop it at the right we, time. Yeah, we for to drop out it this year, man. You going to drop it? It's coming out. Yeah, everything. Wow, I can't out. wait, you man. Know? So how can people get a hold of you, man? We winding down. Man, uh... Uh, 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 Instagram 6'3 you know six what I'm saying 6'3 yeah yeah SIX3 type in DeRoe either way Instagram and Twitter is all I'm on yeah, man. I yeah. Ain't, you know uh, you know, go check out my YouTube DeRoe Music but I'm only on Twitter and Instagram I'm the only two places you know I got the Snapchat now that no don't be threads? on that threads I, I got that too but I ain't really on it like I, I need to be you feel me so I would just say the uh, Instagram you know what I'm saying is the is the is the main way to get to me Okay, um, so Doro, I know you are like entrepreneur, I want to say, of the year. Trying to be for sure. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you always in the different avenues of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Dallas Cowboys, Mavericks, I mean, not a weed strand. Mm -hmm. What other business are you venturing off into? Tell me about it. 
So one of my next ventures that uh, I'm happy to, you know, be venturing in and already in the process of it is actually left field. It's, you're going to catch people off guard. But uh, I'm actually, I actually have a pest control company. Wow. Why pest control? Something like that. So a year ago at the crib, it was a situation where like summertime came and we started having bugs and stuff mm. and like. Texas. It, it, yeah, some <laughs> Texas weather and like it got bad and I and I remember how urgent I was to get rid of that problem. Mm -hmm. I was ready to spend that money fast. Like, you know, it was bothering, you know, my, my, my little ones, my people, my family, you know, they come up, it, it will bother people and it will bother me. And I remember how urgent it made me get that done. You know how sometimes something can linger around and if it ain't the urgent. Yeah, you know, no, you I, don't want that to grow. Yeah, I remember just getting that done, looking looking up a company, getting it done, spending that money fast, right? And taking care of that problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I want to say like a month or two after that, I was approached by a company randomly about some, because I had already been inquiring business to get into, you know, stuff that's going to make sense. And then to learn about stuff I didn't know about. Right. But anyway, I was approached by a business. Mm -hmm. uh, I was I was actually uh, approached. And, you know, when they presented this to me, it instantly clicked. Because I remember, it's you know, you always want to find something where, you know, if it's a problem. It's relatable to you. Yeah, re relatable to you. And, and, you know, people always want to fix and solve problems. So when Trapping USA came about and, and I saw you know, they profiled and what they was about. And I remember how quick I was and I was in a dilemma and how quick I spent some money to get rid of a problem. I was like, this would be a good venture to go into as far as a business. So I tested it out and started working with them. And it was just that like people really, we really want to get rid of these, you know, problems. Mm -hmm. So when I got in, you know, into the business, we created it. Um, I mean, it was already rolling and we started, started having the success. So he and, had this business before. Yeah, so the company, yeah, the company was already there. Okay. You know, it'd been there for like 10 years. They, okay. You know, it'd been there and for that's so crazy years. with a name and then you being in music. Exactly. And exactly. I'm and like, that's, that's why and they, I was they, like. They approached me because they, they based out of, you know, Dallas, Fort Worth, mm -hmm. you know, you know, they was a fan of who I am and aware of who I am and they wanted to, you know, they want to expand out on what they're doing. They're trying to get their word out about right. their company and the first thing that just hit my mind was, like man, a month ago, I was having this issue with bugs and stuff like that, and I really wanted to get rid of it fast. And I paid that money and got it done. This would be a great business venture to test out. And when I went into it and had that success, I was like, okay, this is this is a good thing. So, long story short, man, um, if you having bug problems, and you know you having any type of pest control issues, I got my own company. You know, Trapping USA. And how can and, you find and, it? And Trapping you. TrappingUSA.com mm -hmm. One uh, It'll be on my social media It'll be attached to me You know uh, A lot of it will be Coming out Like right now You'll be seeing it We really just not For the flood The streets with it You know uh, Create the awareness And um, it, It's something I endorse And support And it's Something that uh, Really Will increase your uh, comfortability. You know what I'm and saying? They, and they house. service all of Dallas Fort Worth? All of Dallas Fort Worth. If you're in Dallas Fort Worth, when we expanding out, we're going to be all over Texas soon. But right now, anywhere in Dallas Fort Worth, we're going to come out to you. You know what I'm saying? We got the trucks. We got everything, you know what I'm saying, that you're going to need to get your problem help, get the get to the solution, get your problem handled. Got it. So well, I'm going to tell you the truth, man. Uh, them ants, they bad in the summertime in Texas. And uh, them dang, uh, them big old water bugs, mm -hmm. they horrible. And and it, them termites, termites another thing. Not Mosquitoes, fact. all of this stuff is stuff, roaches, whatever, y'all y'all can kill anything. Nah, we can kill anything, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, Anytime, even even animals. You got animals what in your crib. Yeah, you got big animals. Rats, yeah, like whatever, any type rats, of, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, possums. Just, yeah, possums. We we handle all that. You know what I'm saying? So trapping us dot com. You know any type and it's of problem you have. T R A P P I N. Yes, yes. Trapping. Okay. You know what I'm saying? T R A P P I N G U S A dot com. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, come get rid of those issues for sure. And and you know. Uh, I'm gonna show love. You, if you go on there, you you know you hearing this interview, or you you know you get it and you put in. I'm gonna get your code. Dallas twenty four. Dallas twenty four. Awesome. This is a, that's that's me showing you love. On you know what I'm saying your first time coming, you are gonna pretty much be paying half off. You know on whatever you're trying Dang, to get done. Half you know? off? Yeah, yeah. Because you know I'm, I'm, for that? one, I'm showing love. We we showing love to the city, and I'm going into this venture 
to spread this word, but also to let people know that it's a legit company out here right. that can get rid of problems that we all have in Texas. I don't care where you at, what what side of town you on, you know what I'm saying? It get hot, especially in spring, summertime, the buzz coming. And you know, we on my company gonna get rid of that. Man, the row music, aka 6363, aka the row music is mm-hmm. in the building. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for coming on Boss Talk 101. Guys, make sure you get in these clips right below here. You know, when you put um, discount, you got to put little um, notes underneath that. It's only one time use. Yeah. You can't be using it two, three, four <laughs> times for that yeah. discount. I'm going to show love. If you want to come use the company more than one, we're going to find ways to show love. We're going to show love. But the, the thing is, you ain't going to have to do nothing but really one time because we're going to really do our job. You get what I'm saying? My company going to do the job. You, we're going to take care of the problem. And later on, if it's a problem, we're going we gonna to come with a solution. Wow, so, man. Yeah, man. I'm telling Trapping you, man. TrappingUSA.com. TrappingUSA.com, uh-huh. man. And I'm telling you right now, like I said, you, Lil Ronnie, it's some of y'all premier guys, man, that's really, really, you know, getting down in the city, man. Um, and I just love to see it. You know what I'm saying? 100%. Love to see the entrepreneurship, man. Love to see the the way you guys holding it down. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate so, that. So, man, I just, uh, I, man, it's big. You know what I'm saying? You can got say cheese here in the in the in the city that's doing this thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you got some real. What do you think? I'm gonna let you go after this is the last question. Okay. You got all these different podcasts, bloggers, everybody that you see on the internet. What do you think that do for our uh, for the city? How do you feel about it uh, for the music, just for overall communication? What do you think about it? Man, it's great, bro. Like, this is the first time, and when I say first time, I mean literally the first time where people in Dallas, especially artists, people that's on the music side and the business side, or the street side, wherever you from, you got a legit platform to come spread you know, your words, your brand, or whatever you're trying to get out there, and it's right here in Dallas, and it's going worldwide. Wow. Uh, I remember I used to go to New York. I would have to go to New York to do all my media. You know what I'm saying? And, and like, it would be tough because, I mean, it was just a process, and I used to always, I ain't going to say be jealous, but I would be jealous of the New York artists a little bit because some of them was on my label. Shout out to Jim Jones. I remember one time we was at a barbershop out there. He had hooked me up with his barber one time when I was out there, and he was just casually talking about what he was doing, throughout his days and like he was like yesterday I had went and did this 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 and that and he was naming just like media platforms he went and did and I went to go holler at the label and then I went to go do this platform platform and then that that, that day that I was there which was the next day it was all that stuff that he had did was out wow. and I was just like man he literally was just able to get out of his own bed and go spread whatever he was trying to spread across the world and it was just like that I was like man I would be honored to have these type of platforms in Dallas. So now to see that we starting to have these platforms in Dallas, like y'all, Boss oh, Talk, man, 101, Boss Talk and, 101. Yeah, and, and a lot of other platforms, That that's a great thing for, not just for artists like myself, but other artists and other people that's doing business and you know people who, whatever they doing, it don't matter what it is, we got it right here in the city and it's a worldwide thing. Like this is not a Dallas platform. This is a worldwide platform that happens to be in Dallas, and we lucky to have that. So Man, that's a you. great thing, bro. Like I, I, I want to see more, and I and uh, I and, and everybody in the city need to support that and be happy about that and understand that that really is a blessing to have right here in the Man, city. Man, thank God for you, bro. Like you came early when when nobody coming, and I always say that God sent the ones that needed to be here yeah. early. And don't get me wrong, a lot of people yeah. came, but you came, no hesitation. Pulled up and told me I was doing great as yeah, soon as you yeah. got here. And you so spoke your vision. You. you told me what you was about to do. Oh, man, and going you crazy. It. I'm a hustler, <laughs> you know man. And you <laughs> did it. Y- y'all did it, man. You man. know, so, so shout out to y'all because y'all, y'all had a vision and y'all followed it through. Y'all saw it through, followed it through. And I mean, and, and it's still levels that y'all are still going to take this to. So it. I can see it. Thank you so much, man. God bless you. The Row Music, aka 63, is uh-huh. going down, man. Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And you I already did that a while ago. You did not say yes, about I the did. clips. Yes, I did. Didn't I say about the clips a while ago? What? About getting uh, the clips, getting into the, the clips. Well, let the me clips. say this part. Go